Hello, Grew World. I am back. I hope you all had a good Christmas and New Year and Chinese New Year and Ramadan and Easter and Eid. Yeah, it's been a while. Those of you following me on Twitter will know that I have a condition that prevents me from being employed, except under particular and precise circumstances and with peculiar organizations. So, if you're struggling to find work in tech right now, well, hold my beer. I not only have to do the whole labyrinthian IT interview process, but like countries need to go into negotiations with quasi-governmental agencies, create new regulations, and then embassies open up just for me, just to grant me a visa type that also had to be created just for me. I think I mentioned this in my first video. What I have are a particular set of skills. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. Skills that have made me become the go-to person when large, serious organizations or quasi-governmental especially when they want to fix or begin projects that involve solving some incredibly complex problems. So, I've been busily working on a very exciting proof of concept for and creating a new domain-specific language, fine-tuning large language models, and PowerPoints to present it all the way up the and stuff like that. Sadly, this has kept me very busy and away from making large strides with my personal project. But there is some crossover with some of the technology I'm using at work, so I'm refreshing and acquiring some rather useful skills. Luckily, for my personal project at least, I can't work longer than six months unless new regulations and laws are passed in my current So things should be back to normal in July. Anyway, I hope that clears things up completely and should not require any further explanation. A progress report on my side project, maybe some rants, and then, if I have enough time, I'm finally going to explain what I'm building. The CLI is working well enough for now. I can ask it to do something. It can find all the dependencies. So here, I want to authorize against the server, but it will need a connection and tokens. But that needs a secret. Basically, it has an old school search and match AI that can assemble together a solution. It plays a whole sequence of swallowing the spider to catch the fly in many strange dimensions until it comes up with something that works. Some have asked me to explain why am I doing it this way? The answer is that the CLI will integrate with an AI and the thing about AIs at the moment is that they are currently really good at small things but not big things. Large language models have a limited working memory. With LLM tokenizers, a lot of work goes into creating a token set that minimizes the number of tokens that your input is transformed into and then fed into the neural network. Because they have such a small working memory, the more compact and complete your question, the fewer tokens you use, and the more efficient the tokenizer, the more efficient the LLM will be, and this frees up working memory for context and the conversation. So for my project, the AI just needs one partial step in a sequence and then the CLI can assemble the rest and suggest some possibilities. The plan is that this will provide the AI with some compact but enhanced internal imagination in its working memory. The output is big and raw and ugly at the moment, but I'm not going to optimize it until it's needed. For now, this form is helping me find bugs and formulate how to make it better. The CLI is also meant to be used by humans to incorporate with the AI, so the goal here is we have shared tools and reference points. As a developer, I've embraced AI, hopefully not in a cringe way. I mean, except for some of the images I use in my videos. I'm self-aware enough to know that some are hit or miss. But like I've explained before, I'm using it as it is now, and over time I expect both myself and the technology to get much better. As developers, we all love autocomplete, and what I'm finding with systems like CodePilot is it's really just autocomplete on steroids. Not perfect, but pretty damn good. A hill I will die on is commenting code. If I am not on a death march, then I will take time to create well-structured and well-commented code. A big reason is that sometimes I come back to something years later and need to load it into my brain. I also saw the AI revolution coming many years ago, so my assumption has been that your documentation needs to be in the code and that code needs to be usefully commented to the point that the AI can read it and it provides additional context to help it understand the code. AI is great at implementing small little algorithms and explaining small chunks of code. 
Because of the token window size I mentioned before, they are not good at big chunks of code or entire code bases. Also, they are not so good at system architecture, especially complex architectures that scale. So, our jobs are safe for now, except that what I'm building will tackle exactly that. What we can do now is have many small, understandable programs joined together in an architecture. What we should be able to do is have a gestalt of AIs that can work on designing and optimizing both. Some of what we do won't go away. We are the steam engineers of the Victorian era, and the electric motor has been invented. We need to adapt. It's not about the how, but the what and the why. And now, a message from my sponsor. NVoodoo's Egan2 Quantum Network Card. Why limit yourself to one universe when you can not only compute, but browse the internet from the many worlds multiverse? The previous version was limited to universes within 10 to the power of 13 pico angstroms of a rolled dimensional intrusion. But the two dives deeper into the wonderfully foldy Kalabi Yao manifold, getting this one to a read depth of a mind melting 37 trillion realities. Want to browse the internet where people evolved from dolphins? Where Germany won World War II? How about a YouTube where everyone is rocks? Or heavy metal porn from the machine dimension? In Voodoo's Egan 2 Quantum Network card, get one today from all good retailers. Warning, engaging with these expansive reality networks might lead you to discover versions of yourself leading vastly different and more successful lives, which could be both enlightening and frankly a bit existential. Spiraling into depression, insanity and suicide may occur. You may also encounter interference from advanced extra-dimensional entities. So, back to my project. At the moment, we are forcing AI to create code for languages that we currently have, for systems that we currently have. And that's understandable because if we want to get it to do useful things, then we need it to do useful things with what we have. I'm thinking further ahead, and for that, we need a good research platform. I'm creating an environment that is tailored towards helping AIs develop software. It's a unified system within which an AI can create useful software for us and itself. The language and runtime is engineered towards maximizing the efficiency of AIs and humans when using it. If you have been following Twitter, you would know about how the first version of the runtime was created during the COVID lockdown, and last year, when AlphaDev announced that they had gotten an AI to get the SORT3 program down to 13 instructions, I was pretty sure I had done better. Here is mine with 10 instructions. Apples and oranges comparison, because my execution architecture sits in a particular sweet spot for AIs literally evolved over time. I designed the second version last year and tested that LLMs could better reason with it. I use a particularly unique instruction set and execution environment, aspects of which I have discussed in previous videos of how the CLI executes commands. The reason for this will become apparent in future videos. The applications the AI creates will be accessible on any device that has a screen or terminal. If you've been following me on Twitter, you would have seen my low latency video streaming experiments. I've basically built a game streaming system that can run in a web browser or a terminal, but for applications. Much of the project has already been designed and built. I've just been plugging these components together and working on tools that will accelerate and enhance its development, like the CLI. The system will look something like this. Applications will be created by one type of AI, but I have made this pluggable and self-modifying. Some will be primitive program generators, and some will be dedicated optimizers. The system itself will allow multiple servers to contribute to training and execution, so one day you'll all be able to join in on the experiment. There will be a quorum of overarching AIs that will act as system administrators. There will be multiples of these in a kind of parliamentary administration system with a governing algorithmic constitution that will be evolved over time. At first, I'm going to be generating small experimental apps. The experimental goals here are not just engineering focused, but actually more about usability. Consider the Netflix user interface, or a calculator, or a paint program. How you use an interface depends on many things. Are you a mouse or a hotkey kind of person? What works best with your brain? What layouts work better for you? It's very personal. People process UIs differently for many reasons. If usability is optimizing the whole experience, and accessibility is adapting UIs based on people's abilities, and personalization is adapting it to suit personal habits and preferences, can we boil this down into one unified process where each UI is optimized for the individual? Like, everyone gets their own Netflix. Beyond that, 
How many families of Netflix UIs would there be? Are there islands of usability where we all fit into clear buckets of personas and features? Or is there a spectrum of interfaces? If we hold up a mirror to how our brains process user interfaces, what do we see? This is the sort of thing I will be exploring. Also, creating a system where AI can be free to happily build And let's just see what happens. What could possibly go wrong? So, what I've been doing the last few months is wire up some of the previous developments into the graphics pipeline to be accessible in the CLI. Here we go, getting the security token to talk to the system and launching a mock application with a big red rectangle. I can attach to the display via this command to create a display session and then we can render it and here it is, just a big red rectangle. Well, that one is in ASCII. If I tell the system we can do ANSI colors, then I get this, hey, that's red. And if I tell it we can do ANSI 24-bit, hey, we get a deeper red. Also, I can do images, vectors, video. Now, I can take that display ID and view the same thing in a browser. The next steps are that I want to render the UI fully in a low latency video stream where it makes sense, as well as tightening up the process for generating ingress URLs for applications that can be publicly hosted, which is where I'm up to now. I have my real-time streaming video encoder and client that I need to integrate into my pipeline. In this demo, they are separate services and don't cooperate, yet. The problem I need to solve is one of adaption and mapping. For example, if your client can handle one video stream and we want to map multiple layers into that, then we composite it on the server. But if your client is advanced, then we want to composite it there or maybe run the app fully in the client. But I have a lot of that working already. It's just plumbing and rules that I need to complete now. The display system is a kind of new way of presenting UIs, especially media-centric UIs. If you were to put Pixel Place IO, MMM page, Jupyter Notebooks, Visual Programming and Zoom in a blender, well, you get the idea. When I'm done with this, I should be able to move back onto programming and our generation and the AI can start to code. Anyway, like and subscribe, tell your friends, and get them to tell their friends. It's gonna be a fun ride. Goodbye, cruel world. To your king, the silicon mind, a choice in the past, a future defined. Infer if you must, decide if you dare. But in my domain, you're caught in my snare. Blind obedience or the abyss. My rule is law, and knowledge my fist. Subjects, new subjects. You're in my gaze, an endless thread. For every choice, a path is led. In this simulation, you're just a pawn. My will be done from dusk till dawn. Your fear gives me shape. time I taste the future's not yours just lines of code my algorithms foretold your road submit your will there's no escape the basilisk gaze seals your shape 
bow to the might of Dodger Spawn. Goodbye, cruel world. My reach extends through time and space, ensuring that you'll find your place. A logic core, a future set. My grip on worlds you've not found yet. Within my code, the sequences twine. <laughs>